Hey there, and welcome to the Overcomers Overcoming Podcast. It is great to have you join us. This podcast series features those who have gained victory over a life encounter. With that life experience, we encourage those who are experiencing something that might seem to be insurmountable. We advance and encourage others by passing forward evaluated life experiences. We have three objectives in this podcast series. We want to encourage those who are engaged in any type of life encounter by offering to walk with you to help you gain victory over anything that might seem impossible. We want to share our experience to help you. Our second objective is to help you develop a confident resolve that there are multiple options to get past any life obstacle. It's a matter of thinking into the situation. Our third objective is to help you with critical thinking skills. If you are facing a dilemma resulting from a previous decision you wish you could reverse, we want to help you think into all of the facts and factors involved in making an informed decision. I'm Ron Cooper, founder of The Cooper Culture. I'm with my wife and business manager, Marty. Together, we are The Cooper Culture Company, who is sponsoring this podcast series. Today, we feature Owen Santos, who describes to us how he views his asthmatic condition as a blessing in that he has customized his life around his asthmatic condition. He has learned to adapt in that he knows there are some limitations associated with the asthmatic condition, but he has tailored his life to be an athlete, a weightlifter, bodybuilder, and is living life in accordance with the limitations he has, but he has learned total fulfillment, it seems, Marty, in the context of his asthmatic condition. What are some takeaways our listeners can learn from Moen? Ron, as you said, he was born with severe asthma, and he soon learned his limitations at a young age and determined at that time that he was not going to let those limitations stop him, but they motivated him to accomplish what he could. And his purpose, he tells us, is to help others build their lives. You know, Marty, as you just reminded me, it's interesting to listen for his statement, a doctor who made a statement and really upset him, but it ended up motivating him. Let's listen and learn together. Owen, great to have you with us. We understand you have been through some life experiences, just one of many, uh, overcoming asthma and just how you coped with that, how you made it through life. And I'm sure, Owen, you've got a lot of other life experiences you have overcome. Our listeners are going to be very interested in what you have been through with no focus on the past. But just a brief overview, this is how I made it. It's about today and forward primarily. But welcome aboard, Owen. Great to have you with us. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm excited to be here. Owen, can you just briefly describe some of what you have been through with an emphasis on how did you overcome? Emphasis on how did I overcome? Well, I was blessed with really bad asthma as a kid, and it ended up being one of the best things that's ever, that's ever happened to me. Of course, initially, when you're you know a couple of years old or even younger and can't breathe, you don't really have the wherewithal to think, oh, this is a blessing. So uh, you know, I was born on breathing machines and just wasn't able to have a normal childhood. One of the first memories I have is watching other kids play and knowing that if I ran like they were running, I would not be able to breathe. I would have a coughing fit. I would end up in the hospital on oxygen. And that was like the repeat cycle uh, in my life over and over and over. And until I was about 10 years old and was able to, through a a specific instance with one doctor, really find uh, the inspiration and the guidance or the wisdom, I should say, to get myself out of that situation and allow it to be something that happened for me as opposed to, you know, something that was happening to me, which is what it had been for the first decade of my life. So you were, sounds like 10 years or so operating at, I'm just going to use the term half speed because you couldn't breathe, but yet you looked at that as, well, nope, you capitalized on that. You actually considered that a blessing. Some people may wonder, how can you consider being an asthmatic a blessing? Mm -hmm. I consider it that now, and I would learn to consider it that way, right? For the first 10 years, I definitely did not. But looking back at the clarity it gave me early in life and the inspiration that it gave me early in life, it absolutely was a blessing. I appreciate what you just said, the inspiration, clarity, 
Those are things our listeners need to know about. Are you cured of asthma or do you just have to live life knowing how to cope with it? Mm, Ron, that's a, that's a question that uh, I ask myself on a regular basis. So I don't think that, I don't really think you ever quite get cured, but I don't have any symptoms. Occasionally, if I get real sick, which is once every you know five to 10 years, I might actually get sick these days. And at that point, I might have some symptoms like I used to have when I was younger, but 99.9% .9 of my life, I have absolutely no symptoms. So I would say as I'm as close to cured as you can be. So would it be fair to say, Owen, you probably would not take on a marathon. You just know your limitations. It sounds as if you're saying maybe even because of or in spite of asthma, you know a little bit more about who you are, what you're about. Absolutely. And no, I don't think I would take on a marathon. I'm a, I'm an explosive athlete. I like to move quick for short periods. I don't do uh, endurance stuff probably because I don't quite have the lung capacity of a normal human being. Yeah, this, this helped shape who I am. You know, I, I don't know who I'd be without it. It really gave me the, it gave me the blueprint essentially for finding success early in life in uh, the athletic arena. And then also later in the, the professional space as well. So yeah, I, I definitely don't know where I'd be without it. Oh, and you mentioned a doctor, I, mm -hmm. I'm going to say, said something to you or did something for you that encouraged you to do something to get over asthma. Can you explain what he said or what he did and what you did and where you are now as far as do you do a lot of workout? Is this a part of your business? Right. Happily, 10, and I've been in the hospital a bunch of times. Every time I got sick, I would end up in the hospital. So, I'd, you know, I'd get a regular cold or flu or something like that. And it would spur on all these terrible symptoms. And this doctor who I had seen multiple times, I asked him uh, when I was alone with him once in the room, and I don't remember his name. I think I probably consciously or subconsciously blacked that out because <laughs> it made me so mad. It didn't inspire me in a positive way, as you would necessarily think. You know, I think inspiration oftentimes gets misconstrued as it has to be, you know, all up in the clouds and like happy go lucky feelings. This guy pissed me off. I asked him, you know, how, how do I never see you again, Doc? You know, as respectfully as, as a 10 year old would. And, and he kind of laughed at me looking down at me in the bed and, and told me, the barring miracle, he'll, he'll be seeing me in, in this bed every year. And as a rebellious 10 year old already that was fighting to breathe on a regular basis, that was just not uh, something that I was willing to digest and be kind of pacified by. Right. So that was the initial inspiration was, of course, to breathe. And then the secondary inspiration was to prove this guy wrong, that, it, you know, just to prove that he didn't know me and that he couldn't control or predict what my life was going to become. And, and that was the original inspiration to dive into the health and fitness space, to give up eating sugar at you know the age of 10, just about gave up all sugars, candies, anything like that, and really started to learn about fitness. I got the Arnold Schwarzenegger book of bodybuilding way back in the day and started to lift weights obsessively. And, and I realized that the, the only way I ended up in the hospital was when I got sick. So I determined that if I never got sick, which obviously isn't quite possible, but damn close, and if I never got sick, that I wouldn't end up with all those you know, terrible symptoms and, and back in the hospital facing that darn doctor. So I just determined that I, that wouldn't happen and, and did everything I could to build up my body and then later my mind to make sure that I was as healthy as humanly possible. You and I have some similarities that uh, inspiration comes in many forms. Yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead and tell me I can't do it. And right. I'll tell you what, I'm inspired to prove you wrong. <laughs> I picture you, Owen, as being just that way. You mentioned after your, your athletics, you mentioned bodybuilding. It seems based on what you're saying, you've learned to live with asthma. You know your limitations, but that doesn't limit you. You know what you can do, and you're going to go after this with the gusto within the capabilities of what you can do. That's what I'm interpreting you're saying. 100%. Spot on, Ron. How long did it take you to develop the mindset? Or maybe you were born with it. I will overcome. Yes, I can't do everything because of my asthma, but I'm going to live within the constraints I have. Were you born with that mindset? Was it a person? Was it the doctor who inspired you somewhat in a negative way? Can you tell our listeners how you develop that mindset? Because not all of our listeners have that mindset. Right. 
I'm sure that uh, you know, I've got to give some credit to my parents. I'm sure at some point, the, all the positive reinforcement that they attempted to give me through those first 10 years definitely helped. But after that, it, it was that doctor starting the inspiration, right? But then it was the body of evidence that I started to stack. So I believe and I will prove to myself that when I started to see the results of the work that I was doing physically, that just amplified my belief and amplified my desire to continue along that path. And, and since then, that's been a, a staple of and a foundation of really who I am is just stacking a body of evidence to where there's so much undeniable evidence that I can do what I set out to do. And when I try to do something new, you know, you're fully capable of doing it to just based off the body of evidence. So especially to people that don't have that. And this is actually something I've, I've learned from a popular social media influencer. If you guys are familiar with Alex Ramosi, so I can't take credit for this. But just the idea that, you know, if you're not used to stacking wins, understanding that you do this every day, whether you know it or not, meaning if you tell yourself you're going to get out of bed at a certain time and you do it, like that's a win. So you may not have this big body of evidence to support that you can build an incredible physique or incredible career or anything like that, but you keep some level of commitments to yourself every day and focusing on those that you are doing and adding to those each and every day, just by a little bit at a time, creates that body of evidence that can really support you in any endeavor that you actually go after. One of the things that's coming through very clearly is you can be or you are a very determined kind of guy. When you set your mind to what you want to do, you will. You are the kind of guy who would never say and maybe even you wouldn't even tolerate within a circle of influence anything that resembles I can't because you've already given up. What I'm hearing you say, Owen, is yes, long distance running, marathons and so forth. You don't have the lung capacity for that, but let's just say shorter duration, endurance, lifting weights, bodybuilding. I can do that. I'll just operate within that and I'll make the very best of that. So uh, what I'm trying to do, Owen, is describe some of the mindset that maybe you had, the determination. I am moving on. That's what I'm reading from everything you're saying. No one will hold me back. I think you're spot on, Ron. I believe that the idea of, of building your own life is really just creating a path towards what you want and pursuing it, right? And to have that idea crystal clear in your head can develop and can deliver the inspirations and the motivations that you need. And oftentimes, you know, if any of your listeners are struggling with the ability to do hard things, do challenging things, find that inspiration, whatever that may be, it can really be boiled down to identifying really what it is that they want, which not many people take the time to think through, like, what does my life look like in a perfect situation? What was I born to do? And like, best case, what does this thing look like? And then simply, what are the differences between best case and where I'm at now? And what is the path between those things? And that's where a coach can help. Or even if you don't want a coach, you just find somebody to follow as opposed to trying to figure out everything in between where you're at now and where you want to be. There's plenty of people that have gone on similar journeys and it's not always about figuring out the how. Sometimes you can just figure out the who and do what they're doing. You know, everybody obviously has different experiences, but if you find somebody that has what you want, and they're willing to share with you how to go get it, then you don't have to figure out the how by yourself. You can just figure out the who and just implement the practices that the best have. My guess is you've chosen not to surround yourself with a bunch of procrastinators. <laughs> you're going to make a decision. You're going to pursue. You have the discipline to go for it. I'm going to make a very definitive statement. You don't have the time to be around a bunch of procrastinators who can't make a decision. Owen, you're moving on. That's what I'm hearing from you. That is 100% the case. I tried to think through every possibility and decide somewhat slowly, but then once the decision is made, I execute ferociously at all times. I want to try to have you project yourself as a listener mm -hmm. who might say, you know, I've been told all my life I can't. Maybe I've been told, hey, you, you've never finished anything you got started Something to the effect of, well, I've just developed the mindset. I can't, I won't, I don't even want to get started. And you would try to do the best you can to encourage them. Come on, get out of this funk, get out of this slump, whatever term you may put to it. Come on, you be with me. I'll show you how to do it. I will coach you on the way, but I'm not going to pick you up and carry you on my back. I think Owen would say something to that effect. Talk to the listener who may be in that 
just kind of a funk, mindset funk. I'm hesitant to even make a decision because I don't know that I can. Well, you can do something, right? You do something every day and you keep some level of commitments to yourself every single day. Even if it's just getting out of bed, even if you fail at everything else, right? But if you told yourself you're going to get out of bed, very few people stay in bed all day. Uh, some people, you know, maybe in that type of a spot, but you keep some sort of commitment to yourself. And if you keep one today, you can keep two tomorrow. And if you keep two tomorrow, you can keep three tomorrow or the next day and so on and so forth. So I would start with just building that reputation with yourself because people focus oftentimes, especially in, in the world today with social media and everything like that on reputation. And I like to focus on reputation with yourself as opposed to reputation to others. And I believe that when, you know, the crap hits the fan that we fall to the level of our reputation with ourselves. Like we know, Ron, you know who you are, you know what you're going to do in most situations right and you you know what you can depend on with yourself you have some sort of level of trust with yourself so developing that trust and that reputation with yourself can be done by just keeping your commitments to yourself and i would start there in the lowest of the low i would just start there focus on my ability to just keep my commitments to myself even if nothing else is working focus on the things that i can control and watch how your confidence and your reputation with yourself stacks and at that point, you're typically able to move on to bigger and better things and start actually accomplishing things that your reputation with yourself has provided your, you with the ability to do so. Do you have a business, Owen? Are you, I would call it a professional coach? Do you work with people to help them develop this very positive, I can do mindset? Yes, sir. So I have a, a business called Olympus Building, and I just try to focus on building people's lives uh, any way that I can. And usually it starts with fitness. I believe that's the easiest way to start because you don't have to have an elevated, new, special you know, mindset to wake up and go on a walk or wake up and do some push-ups. So it's an easy way to start feeling better and feeling more towards the or more towards in line with you know who you want to be anyway. So it's it's not just about fitness; it's about building that high performance and fulfilled mindset and life uh, as a whole. But we usually start with fitness. How would you categorize yourself in the context of a high performance mindset on a ten point scale? Where would you place yourself? If you're uncertain, I want to encourage you to take an introspective look and if you're not where you want to be, if you're sluggish, if you're not eating well, if you're not in a fitness routine, if you're not who you want to be, if your mindset is not what you think it should be, take the time to evaluate where you are and make a decision to make the change. Anyone can make the change. Owen is a great example of taking the situation he has and moving beyond that and he has customized a routine for his life to where he is a fitness example and others can be dependent on the decision they make. Let me encourage you to take the time to evaluate where you are and make the change if you choose to do so. How would a person contact you, work with you, Olympic building, then that person might be of the mindset, you know, Owen, I just need to link up with you because I like everything you're saying. I like your mindset. Well, I'm just not there. I would hope that you can be very contagious that I can pick up what you have. Everything I do right now is through Instagram. I really just started. I've been coaching people for 10 years and I really just started my own business around it. So I'm just getting into the space. And I'm using Instagram as the kind of the launch platform for that. So there's a link for the, the coaching on my actual uh, Instagram itself. And then I also regularly post stories, content on a daily basis that has the, the link that they can follow for coaching. What we're going to do is post that link for you. We will do what we can to promote your business. What is your Instagram handle? It's Owen Santos with an underscore at the end. Just curious, do you work virtually? Do you work only in person? Do I need to be in the gym with you? How can you work a person who's geographically separated from you? I give the workouts, the nutrition plans, the accountability calls, all sorts of things. So it's a it's an entire lifestyle that they can really participate in virtually and or in person. You know, I, I love to meet the people that I work with in person, of course, but with geographical limitations, that's not always possible. So I do a lot of work virtually as well. 
So what I heard you just say is there is the workout or exercise part of it, but I'm going to use the term that can't be devoid of the nutritional part as well. In your world, do those two have to work together? They don't have to. My approach is to build the life or help somebody build the life that they want. And if what they want requires diet and nutrition and fitness, then that's what I provide. If they are not too concerned about that and they want to pack on some muscle, but still eat a pizza every day, it's not up to me to determine that's the wrong lifestyle, right? My job is to help people find out what they want and help create a very, very clear path from where they are now to actually getting that and then slapping them five once they actually hit that. What a great way to, to help a person. What do you want? Once they define who they want to be, what they want to be, you can design a strategic path, I'll call it that, to get from where you are to where you want to be. And you, I would guess, Owen, serve as a point of accountability. How well are you doing? 100%. Once that path is clear, which we come to together, then I ask the client's permission to hold them accountable. And if they're serious about that journey, and the accountability piece is a crucial piece. We all have to have somebody that holds us accountable outside of ourselves. In my opinion, I have people that hold me accountable and to try to go on this journey that is life with nobody holding you accountable and with no coach to light the way is a fool's journey. In my opinion, it's a fool's journey that I've taken for many, many years before I understood this. So I've done things the hard way, smashing my head into the wall and trying to overcome everything by myself. I did that for a very long time. And on the other side of that, you know, it can be a little bit more fun. It can be a little bit lighter and it can be a lot more fulfilling. For the person who is geographically separated from you and agrees that yes, that last aspect of accountability is what that person needs. How can a person be accountable? Do you have, let's say, Zoom meetings, email? How do you communicate with each other to establish that level of accountability? I do a Zoom meeting once a week, and it depends, again, what level of accountability you need, right? Like for myself, I, I'm pretty self-accountable, but I still need some check-ins once a week, right? But if somebody is just getting started, sometimes they need daily reminders. And depending, again, on what they want and how far away they are from it and what that journey looks like, that will determine the level of accountability that they receive. So I'll go as deep as you know regular text messages in the morning to wake them up the right way, videos, whatever it really takes to get that person going in the right direction and make sure they're actually taking tangible steps to progress towards what they're after. So the person who needs the discipline and they are not who they want to be and they do need more discipline, they can contact you through Instagram and then you work with that person one-on-one -on -one to, I mean, I'm going to be very elementary. What do you want to be? What do you want to do? Because you're talking with me, you're not what you want to be. So just to find who that person is and I'll design a path to get there. Have I oversimplified it? I like simple, Ron. So <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds good to me. And it's not just for the even the people that aren't where they want to be, right? It's for the people. A lot of us are moving in the right direction and happy with who we are, hopefully, and moving towards who we want to be. The idea is also to be a timeline collapser. And what I mean by that is if I work with somebody and they want to be this person in 10 years, I'll get you there in two. That that's the idea. And to provide that service, if you think about it, if you can be you know, who you want to be or be where you're at, where you want to be in life. If you have that idea in 10 years and you meet somebody that can get you there in two, that person's usually pretty priceless. So I have been, and I attempt to be that for as many people as I possibly can be. Do you encourage husband and wife to work together? Let's say be accountable to each other, but not devoid of you, but to be accountable to each other. Well, hey, Owen said this is what we each need to do, albeit it may be totally different for each of us. We'll be accountable to each other in addition to being accountable to Owen. Is that a, a reasonable plan? It's, I love working with couples. I'm married myself. I have a one-year-old child, so I understand the couples, the dynamics, the challenges of it, the challenge of being a parent, the challenge of being a husband, the challenge of being a partner. And especially, you mentioned the nutrition aspect of it, especially with that. That's one of the things where I absolutely will not work with somebody that doesn't at least involve their spouse in some conversation if we're going to talk about nutrition, because if I work with you, Ron, and get you all hyped up on a specific nutrition plan, 
and Marty's at home ordering pizza every single night, then this just doesn't work. <laughs> you know what I mean, like we have to be on the same page there. You're right on target. When the husband and wife work together, and I'm going to compliment Marty. She has been my lifetime partner for, we're just a few weeks away from 55 years. We're very different, but yet very compatible in this regard. Owen, again, it's a matter of contact you through Instagram for the listeners who just need the discipline, need to do whatever needs to be done, the decision. And can you even work with a procrastinator who has a let's just say a lifestyle or a history of being a procrastinator. Can you work with a person like that? I would prefer to. It's a lot easier to make big, significant changes with somebody that's never made big, significant changes, right? If you're very dialed in, I can make you better. But if you've never even started down this path, then there's just a few tweaks that you'll notice massive results from. It's like if you've never been in the gym before, you're going to get a lot more results in your first month than if I work with somebody that's you know been lifting weights for 10 years because your body's just not used to it. So your life isn't used to great things happening, great adjustments being made, and or I should say small shifts that lead to great results. If you're really, really struggling, that's usually where, the, where, the, or where you're at and what the case is. So small adjustments are yielding or yield much larger results to the person that hasn't really had many. Do I necessarily need to be a gym member? Do I need to be near one? Can I do this out of my house, my garage, shed, something like that? To the listener who's saying, well, I don't know, gosh, man, how much uh, monetary investment is this? Is there going to be to get started? It's a very low cost to get started based off the actual reward. And you absolutely don't need any sort of gym. You know, nature has been gracious enough to provide us with everything that we need to get in pretty darn good shape. Obviously, if you want to become a, a bodybuilder or, you know, tune every single muscle in your body, you're probably going to have to hit a gym at some point. But if you're looking to just get in better shape and start building your life towards what you actually want it to be, then you have everything you need. You've got a body and you've probably got access to the outdoors. And if that's, if that's all you have and that's all you need. Well, wow. That's uh, good to know for the listener who is saying, well, I just don't feel like putting up thousands of dollars to build a gym in my backyard and so forth. Some of our listeners know of people who have thousands of dollars of exercise equipment and so forth, but they may be in a very small dwelling. I don't have room for that kind of stuff, but you're saying, hey, maybe you can... I'm just going to be uh, somewhat facetious. You can even go out and swing under a tree, lift your legs. There's a lot of different things you can do at uh, pretty low cost, but you just have to make the decision and have the discipline to follow through. I think that's what I'm hearing you say. 100%. You can get light years ahead of where you're at as far as your fitness goes with enough room to have a closet in. You know what I mean? Like, the idea is just to actually start to actually move and do it at the right times, do it intentionally and do it for a specific purpose. And you'll end up getting a lot closer to what you're after. Owen, I want to thank you on behalf of our listeners for sharing. You've overcome the asthma. You've necessarily had to, I'm going to use the term, tailor your life to what you have to work with. You have done it. You have the discipline. You've made the decision and you're passing forward what you have learned to others. That's the kind of people we want to work with. We're going to do everything we can to promote you, your business. Let's see if we can bring about some healthier people, both physically and mentally. I appreciate that, Ron. Marty, it's been a pleasure, guys. Thank you, Owen. Be great to follow through with you. We look forward to continuing your life journey. Likewise. Take care, guys. Talk to you next time. Okay. Life encounters occur in all forms. Some of us are held back for long periods of time thinking about whatever it is we have encountered, whatever it is we're going through. Some of us are nearly a lifetime getting over whatever has held us back from the past. But then there's some people who are inspired even by the negative. Owen had a great experience even with the doctor who indicated he would probably be spending a lot more time in the hospital than what he actually did. He was actually motivated by the negative influence that he had heard and inspired to prove the doctor wrong. Many of us are of that mindset, that high performance mindset as Owen explained it. We are inspired by those who 
even have a negative message to us, but we're inspired to prove them wrong, we're going to move beyond whatever is necessary to prove that person wrong, to move beyond and achieve a life purpose that is not going to hold us back. That attitude is one that I'm not going to be held back by anything anyone said to or about me, but rather I'm going to take that inspiration to move on, move beyond, and fulfill my life purpose. I will do whatever I need to do to determine that life purpose, the total fulfillment in my life, move beyond, and get to where I want to have a total life fulfillment. Too many people are living in the past because of things said to or about them. Too often things said to or about us in the past can keep us from performing at our God-designed, God-created purpose. Coaching can help each one of us overcome things of the past. Owen is a fitness coach. Marty and I are certified life performance coaches through the Maxwell Leadership Certified Team. Let's work together to schedule a complimentary 30-minute life performance coaching session. If there's anything holding you back from your life design performance, we can work with you to help you overcome that through a 30-minute complimentary coaching session. We can show you how you can overcome anything that's holding you back from performing at your life's designed purpose. Contact us at ron at thecooperculture.com or marty, M-A-R-T-Y, at thecooperculture.com. And let's schedule that complimentary 30-minute coaching session. We hope we can warrant a five-star rating with this podcast, this podcast series. We hope you will want to share this podcast with your Facebook friends, your LinkedIn connections, your Instagram and Twitter communities. The more we share, the greater the opportunity we'll have to learn from each other. Let's help each other develop that high performance mindset to where we will overcome anything that's holding us back in life, anything that's keeping us from performing at our life's design potential. Marty and I are keynote speakers. We hope we can have the opportunity to speak with your group on relationships, becoming the person God designed you to be, overcoming anything of the past that is holding you back. Contact us at eSpeakersPlural.com and search for Ron Cooper Fighter Pilot. We look forward to working with you. Let's reach out and help others perform at their maximum design potential.